Hello again, viewers. Um, in the last tutorial, STM32 tutorial videos, we used a timer and a timer channel to flash an LED uh, rather slowly uh, every 500 milliseconds, so uh, leading to one blink every second. Uh, today, we are going to speed up things uh, quite a bit. Uh, so, for this, I have created a new project, project which I called STM32 World underscore PWM1. And I have done a basic configuration with serial output and running on the crystal at 16 megahertz, etc. etc. I have generated the code, and in the code, I have added our usual redirection of printf to uh, the first UART and I am printing up a little printing out a little bit of debug info. Let's try to run this and it is essentially doing nothing but printing out some statement on the serial console. Uh, if we look at the uh, hang on here yeah. if we look at the oscilloscope, the toy oscilloscope, I have attached to the output pin. Uh, it is doing nothing at the moment. But let's try to get a timer configured it, like we did the last time. We are going to use timer 4, same timer, and we are going to use channel 1 to generate PVM, just like last time, because that's where I happen to have attached my oscilloscope. Let's say we want to run this. Last time we run, ran at a speed of 1 hertz. Uh, this time let's try to run it at 100 megahertz. So how do we get from the APB clock of 84 megahertz, it's configured here, down to 100 hertz? Well, if we start by dividing by 840 which we should then put at 839 we are down to 100 from we, we are going down to about 100 kilohertz so if we count up to a thousand from here that should run at exactly 100 hertz this was wrong it was 839 there so we are dividing by 840 and then dividing by a thousand and we can set our width down here to uh, half of the thousand so 500 uh, 500 that should pretty much do this trick let's try to generate the code from this and in our code we need to start the the timer um where do we have it? I I did cheat and write this before. So after we have started the PVM1, we can print out that we are starting the timer and then we can start the timer in PWM mode on channel 1. Let's try to build and flash that and see what happens. It started there, and let's have a look at the device, the the, the oscilloscope. Uh, I can make that bigger. There, so you can see that it runs. I don't know if you can actually see that on the video, but it runs at exactly 100 hertz, and each division on the scope is at the moment two milliseconds. So you can see it is five milliseconds high, and then five milliseconds low leading to a, a, a period of uh, 10 milliseconds or 100 hertz exactly now as the last time we we can actually change oh, a better um, there we can change the pulse width uh, if we go down to say 100 here we Generate the code and build and flash, and you will see over here 
that the pulse width is now changing. So we have a short pulse of uh, one millisecond actually, and a nine millisecond um, low again. Uh, fortunately, it is not necessary to pre-program this. We could set this at zero. Now, if we generate that and then run that code, you'll see that there are no pulses at all. Nothing happens. It just stays low all the time. Now, in our code, we could then change this uh, counter value. Fortunately, uh, ST uh, provides a macro to change this uh, no matter what time or channel you're running at. And it's called underscore underscore hell tim set compare because it is the compare register in the timer that we're actually configuring. So if we set our timer for channel one, we could set that to 500 again. We should get that nice duty cycle of um, of 50%. Let's see what comes out of that. Here we go. And there we go, a nice cycle. So we can basically program this in here. We could go up and say, I want 900. Let's see how that works out. And there we go. It goes uh, it goes high for nine milliseconds and low for one milliseconds, exactly as we expected. Now, because we can play around with this uh, in the code, we could actually start to play with this in the changing it while it's running. So uh, I actually started, uh, I, I implemented a next change here. So uh, we can do a, another if statement in the main look, if now is greater than equals next change. Next change equals now plus say I want to change every 100 milliseconds. Uh, we can do it like that. And what we can do is we can take a couple of, um, we can create a couple of variables um, to keep track of the change. So we can actually change the change, if so to speak. Um, there we have a PVM value and then we have a PVM change. And then in our change uh, statement down here, We can basically say that set that PVM value uh, to the timer, and then we can modify the change, and we do that every hundred milliseconds. When it counts up, when it reaches a thousand, we reverse and start to count down. When it reaches zero, we start to count up. Let's see how that looks. There it is running, and let's look at the device. You can see it gets bigger and bigger. Let's uh, do that a little bit quicker. So we set that to 10. And then look at the device. There, you'll see that it builds up slowly. And when it reaches full, it reverses and gets smaller and smaller and smaller again. And it keeps doing that. Uh, we could speed this up uh, even more. Uh, let's say uh, two. See how that looks. Should get quite quick.
there we go. You'll notice that this is actually, it is low, and when the pulse comes in, it, uh, it gets high. Uh, that can be changed. Well, okay, no, let me, let me start by saying you can actually see over here, you can see that the LED, remember I wired from PV6, is it PV6? I put a wire from PV6 or to PC13. So you can see that the LED over here is actually pulsing slowly. Uh, but if you remember the way the LED was actually active low, so when this is low, the LED is powerful. When it goes high, the LED goes off. If you want to do that in a more logical way, we can go in here and we can set this polarity to low. That means that the pulse will actually go low or it will be uh, high by default and then the pulses will go low. So if we try to run this, it will actually follow the logic uh, of this. So there, right, when it is, uh, so actually I should change the trigger. Uh, where is that? Oh, is that there? So there. So now it's actually high by default, and then the higher the value go, the more it will be low. Uh, but it works exactly the same way. But now it follows. So when this is narrow, the pulse is narrow. The LED is off. When it gets higher, so that is the way to regulate a LED. Uh, and pulse a lead uh, nicely to dim a lead or whatever you want to call it. So that's pretty much what I want to do today, what I want to talk about today. Uh, next time I'm going to play with a few more LEDs, uh, but that means I need to wire up some more LEDs, but I'll get back to that next time. As usual, since I always forget it though, uh, please do like and subscribe if you feel these uh, videos have any value to you whatsoever. Uh, it's just a click and it doesn't cost you anything. There you go.